I do this on a Zoom call, but it's just kind of getting thinking this way. I say, here's the question. Of the last 20 people you helped buy a car, take your last 20, go through the CRM, identify those 20 people. Then here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to call all 20 with this question. You're gonna say, Mrs. Jones, thank you for your business. I've had some yard signs recently made up. They say the shiny new car in my driveway came from John Dawson. I was wondering when you could stop by the dealership, pick up one of my yard signs, put it in your yard next to the driveway of your new car, and then if you could go ahead and post it on social media and tag me so I can see the yard sign. I was wondering when you could come by and do that. Ask a room for the salespeople. How many of your customers will come back to the dealership to pick up a yard sign and put it in their yard to then post on social media to tag their network and tell them that shiny new car, and oh, by the way, all my neighbors now know that shiny new car came from you. How many of your customers will come back to the store to pick up your yard sign? You see, because if all you did was sell 20 cars, zero is the answer. But if you created aggregates, the answer is almost all of them. You see, an advocate is something different. It's special. It's creative. It's a different kind of breed of customer. You see, an advocate psychologically is someone who will endure personal injury in order to see somebody they care about succeed or win. A gentleman who's no longer physically in the room here, but whose presence will linger, is Tim Cox. Tim Cox, at Carnell, is an advocate of mine. So even though his body is in torment because he's had surgeries and he's got some injuries that have been with him chronically for a long time, this man was here until 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, pushing tables and organizing the tables. Literally on his hands and knees, cleaning up ice that fell out of the bucket. This is the man who's my advocate. He will endure personal injury to see me succeed. And the vice versa is the same. I would, I would injure myself to see Tim succeed. An advocate is someone who will march in the streets, who will put up a yard sign, put up a bumper sticker, who will knock on doors. An advocate will disrupt their life and other people's lives because they care about something. My question is, how many advocates did you make last month? Not how many cars did you sell? Because you can sell 200, 300, 500, 600 cars a month and make zero advocates. It's actually possible. But on the long game, the advocacy business is where all the real joy is, all the real revenue is. It's all an advocacy. So what I want to do, and what I try to teach sales teams to do, is how to out experience the competition and create raving fan advocates, not just how to sell more cars. It's actually, today, more than ever before, easy to sell a car. Is that not true? Almost painfully so? How many of you are actually partly here because you realize your team is getting weaker by the day? Anyone notice that? All right, salesmanship out the window, customer service out the window, effort out the window. It's happening all over the place. We experience it as individuals going into places and getting with basically no service. The service industry is dying all around us. It's painful to watch, especially for somebody who thrives on customer experience. And so I'm trying to like beat this drum and say, pay attention, this matters, it matters now. Because it is easy, it matters even more. So psychology is about helping people see that and ask a different question. Not how many cars we sell, how many advocates we create. I challenge you as leaders, go back to your store and put that hypothetical question to the test. And see who on your team raises their hand and says 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Half of my customers would come back and get a yard sign for me. And then put them to the test. Oh, really? Let's order some yard signs. Let's order some yard signs. If your customers come back and pick them up, I'll pay for the whole package. But if you can't get half of them to come back, you pay for the whole package. Put them to the test. Now, you might think this is you know, almost crazy talk, but if you follow my work and if you follow me on social media, you know I have students who have yard signs. People who actually do. In fact, we can speak to them here. Your score has a bunch of guys, a bunch of my students who have yard signs. Not only that, there's a, a really great video of a lady who came to the dealership. She, she couldn't find the car she wanted. She left, she bought from somewhere else. She regretted the purchase that she made at another dealership. And when the salesperson from sitting here, when the salesperson had followed up post-sale, he made himself available and said, hey, listen, I know you bought somewhere else, but if I can ever help. Um, she said, well, I, I really wish I bought a car from you, and he says, well, listen, if you feel so bad about it, come back and pick up one of my yard signs. <laughs> so she yeah, drove back. She didn't even buy a car from him. I know, drove back, bought, picked up the yard sign. While she's there, she's infusing. She's saying, I can't believe 
I made the mistake of buying from it all. I feel so bad about it. He said, well, if you feel, feel this bad about it, you should probably go on Facebook Live and tell your whole friends where to buy the car. She went, let's do that too. So now she's doing a Facebook Live to her entire network at a dealership she didn't even buy a car from, apologizing to the salesperson while she's picking the yard signs and tell all of them, please don't make the mistake I made. That's an advocate. Does that make sense? That's what, to me, that's what it's about. Anybody can sell a car, make money. Well, yes, great. I'm happy. We all have to be profitable. But I'm the advocate. That's what I want to do. 